welcome back to the channel. So what happens to the tires on a Tesla Model 3 when you lower it and um, don't compensate for the camber? Well, today we're gonna dive into that. This video uh, came up because I've had a number of people ask about road noise. Now, if you listen, the car's nice and quiet. Well, that's because I switched back to the uh, the stock 18 inch aero wheels and tires. I don't have the aero hubcaps on it. And um, I did that not because I dislike my 20s or because these wheels and tires are somehow better. Actually, they're, they're only better in that they're more efficient. But um, I, um, I basically, the uh, I was starting to have road noise coming from my, uh, my 20 inch wheels and tires. And uh, more and more people were asking about it in my videos. Hey, what is that noise? Do you have bad wheel bearings or is it the tires? No, it was the tires. So um, now going back when I first bought that uh, set of 20 inch wheels and uh, the first set of tires, which were Pirelli's. Oh gosh, that was um, I don't, just a few months into ownership of the car, six, eight months into owning it. I noticed that um, the, uh, the the 18-inch aero wheels and tires, the, the tires were wearing prematurely, or well, I don't know about premature, but they don't they don't have very good longevity. And um, I put about uh, I think it was 10,000 miles uh, on them, and uh, there was a, a noticeable, a significant amount of wear on the rear tires. And uh, I have a rear-wheel drive car; it's not all-wheel drive. Uh, and no, I don't drift the car or anything. It just the driven wheels are always going to wear faster than the non-driven wheels. So I was noticing a, quite a bit of, of wear on the stock 18-inch wheels and tires. I thought that's fine because I'm getting 20-inch wheels and tires for it, which I have done. Well, the 20-inch wheels and tires, originally I got Pirelli tires, and um, uh, those tires, they had a lot of road noise to begin with, and they began feathering and cupping and just, which is... Uh, very odd asymmetrical wear and they were making a lot of road noise and just really annoying and um, so I replaced them with Falcon Azenis tires and uh, those tires are very quiet uh, better traction than the Pirelli's uh, oh goodness um, better wet weather traction they lasted longer and they were half the money the Pirelli's were $1,200 the Falcons were like $630 with shipping now, when I put the 20 inch wheels and tires on the car, I also had T Sportline one inch lowering springs installed. And when I had those lowering springs installed, I then brought the car in and had it aligned. The alignment shop did tell me, they said you now have a little bit of camber, that uh, negative camber that has been added to the car because of lowering it. And uh, they said it's not bad enough to worry about but the, the camber has increased. Now he did tell me, he said, that's gonna make it handle a little bit better. It'll make it corner a little bit better because adding negative camber means that the outside tires, you're gonna have better contact patch on the pavement when you corner. And um, so, but he did tell me that he said, it's, it's really slight, but there is some camber there and that I may see a little bit of additional wear on the insides, uh, the inside edges of the tires versus the outsides. Uh, he did tell me that the uh, the additional camber was was just slight and it was still within the realms of what he considered normal for a street car so not to worry about it but a lot of people asked me hey what's the tire wear like uh, with uh, with the car lower because there is a little bit more uh, negative camber that's been added to the car so this video I wanted to go ahead and explain what I found so um, Here's, uh, here's some, some quick uh, video footage of the front and rear tires of the car. So let's go to that. So you can see, this is the outside, uh, this is the outside of the tire. And um, there's some decent tread depth there, but then the inside, there's less. So um, lowering the car does put the wheels on a little bit of a, of a camber. I was told that uh, by the, align the alignment shop, they said there's... Uh, Dropping the car puts a little bit of camber on the rear wheels. And um, so um, you can see that it's, the again, the outside has a bit of tread. If I were cornering the car hard a lot, the outside would have worn to compensate. But 
I'm not, I don't do any track time, so, but you can see how worn it is. Now, this is one of the front tires, and uh, it doesn't look very worn at all, except for, for one thing, and you can't really see it in the video, but this side right here, uh, this side right here is cupped. And so that's why I was getting that rrr, 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 sound on the videos, is um, some cupping. So don't know if it's if it's uh, you can see it at all by the video, but uh, in um, in person you can definitely see it. So, but uh, that and I want to have the wheels gone over. There's a there's a marred area here. These are powder coated. Um, you can't really touch up powder coat, so I'll have that touched up in white uh, white paint. And I just want to have the wheels gone over and um, dressed up a bit. Now, as you can see, the rear tires have far more tread wear than the fronts. And again, that's normal rear wheel drive cars. You always have more tread wear than uh, at the driven wheels, the rear wheels than you will are the tires than you will on the front. Um, also though, I have been driving with those, the Falcon tires, I've been driving more aggressively than, uh, than I was with the previous tires because they stick better. The, but if you notice by the, the video, the rear, the rear tires have a little bit more tread wear on the inside edges than the outside. Now, if I were driving the car on the track, that increased negative camber, would the, the tires would wear more evenly because cornering hard, you do tend to scuff the outside edge of the tire. But uh, being that I'm not on the track, uh, that negative camber ended up wearing the tires just ever so slightly more on the inside than the outside. And um, now the front tires, have um, I don't know if the inside edge is worn more than the outside edge is still quite a bit of tread there but the the uh, front tires were cupping and what cupping is an odd resonance that it, it can occur from cornering hard but that would be the outside of the tires when it happens on the inside of the tires it can be from an odd resonance where the, the rubber is kind of vibrating and as the tire goes around it's almost like driving down a um, driving down a muddy road and as as your tires bounce it will splash uh, water out of potholes and it'll make them deeper and deeper and it from the, the bouncing resonance that's kind of what happens with cupping you get a little bit of resonance in the tire and you end up with this odd cup shape all the way around the perimeter of the tire it's hard to see in the video but in person it's really obvious and so I was getting a lot uh, a lot of road noise coming from the front tires, from the cupping, and the rear tires, as you can see, are totally worn out, completely shot. So I need new tires, and um, I'm not going to put brand new tires on my 20-inch wheels just yet for a couple reasons. One, I want to drive through the rest of the winter with the stock wheels and tires, buy myself a little bit of time, use up some of the tread that these tires have, but also just salt and that it's winters are hard on wheels, so I'd rather use the stock wheels for that also those 20 inch wheels uh, they need a little bit of a uh, little bit of care there are a couple of uh, I, and now luckily I haven't curbed those wheels with the white with the white powder coat on them but one wheel fell over one time from just having it standing there by itself and you know, gouged the powder coat and there was uh, some other some rock debris in that and so I, I want those wheels touched up and I might have them color matched to the color of the car. Those of you that are eagle-eyed will notice that the white powder coat is a different shade of white than the white on the car. So it's difficult to touch up white powder coat. You normally need to just touch it up with paint. And if I'm going to have them touched up anyway, I may just have the tires removed, bring the, the wheels into the body shop that has done uh, paint work on this car in the past and have them paint matched white right over the white powder coat to match the car. I've been told that that powder coat makes a good primer base for paint anyway. So I'm kicking that idea around. Maybe I'll go ahead and do that. And if I decide to have the wheels professionally touched up and or especially if I have them uh, repainted to color match the car, then I definitely don't want to use them in the winter. I'll wait until uh, springtime when the weather is nice. I'll put brand new fresh tires on those wheels, probably another set of Falcon Azenus tires, or if there's better tires available at the time, I'd go with that, and then put the car back to very new look. So that's the reasoning behind this, but for those of you that are curious, if you lower the car 
you do get a little bit of increased negative camber, both at the front and rear wheels. I can tell you this, there are camber arms that you can, you, you can get adjustable arms uh, to compensate for this. Mountain Pass Performance makes both the front upper control arms that are shim adjustable and rear control arms that are thread adjustable to adjust the camber. And uh, am I gonna go ahead and get those camber adjustable arms? I don't know, probably not. Uh, the main reason is it would be between the cost of the, the parts, some labor time, be a couple thousand dollars to do that. I just, I don't know that I wanna do it. The, there's really not enough increased tire wear to worry about. What I am curious about is, uh, I always inflate my tires very high, and I've never had a problem with doing that, but I'm wondering if there's something about the 20 inch uh, wheel and tire combo that airing them up to 50 PSI might be uh, exaggerating that resonance and giving me cupping because I had cupping on the inside edge of the front tires on both my Pirellis and on the Falcons. So what I'm gonna do is the next batch of tires that I put on the car, the next set, I'm just gonna air them up to the recommended pressure. I think it's 40 PSI or something like that. And, um, and see if I get cupping again or if it might be the uh, inflating them to the max pressure. They, they were rated for 50 PSI, and that's what I had in them, but that was a maximum tire pressure. So maybe having them lower would change the, the resonance of the tire on the pavement and maybe reduce the cupping. I don't know. Uh, I was running higher pressure primarily for um, the better range that you get out of the car. And, um, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm curious to see if it affects the, the tread wear at all. Also, I'm getting into the uh, driving a little bit more aggressively on some of the back roads we have, and I would, uh, I'd like to uh, improve the, the cornering ability and um, having the tires at a, a, uh, a more normal uh, pressure level will definitely give me more contact patch and better cornering. So, one last thing I want to bring up before I uh, close this video, and that is the feel of the car going back to the 18s. I had people mention that the car handles better, it accelerates better, it brakes better, it does everything better with the 18 inch wheels and tires. And I soundly told them that was not the case. And uh, I gotta tell you, these 18s, they are smoother and they're quieter, but wow, the handling is mushy. I mean, mushy. There is no road feel at all. And it's it feels as though when I give it a, a command input to the steering wheel that there's a delay before the car actually responds. My 20 inch wheels and tires gave me razor sharp handling. I mean, razor sharp. The people that I let drive the car, every one of them that got in the car and drove it said, whoa, it's precise. You give it the tiniest bit of steering input and the car just darts. My 16 year old son noticed it. He said, wow, dad, this thing is so willing to change directions. And um, so I got better acceleration, far, far, far better cornering, better braking, uh, better traction uh, overall with my 20 inch uh, wheels and tires than I do with these 18s. So it, it's almost disconcerting how mushy these 18s feel on the road compared to, to my low profile 20s. So anyway, that's the scoop. Uh, just wanted to uh, let you guys know you know, why I've switched wheels and tires and what's going on. So uh, as I uh, put new tires on the 20s and, and if I have them painted or whatever, I will, um, I'll definitely do a video on that for you guys. I also have a video coming up. There is a little bit of paint damage on the body of the car from salt and road debris and whatnot kind of at the bottom edge uh, of the bodywork. And I'll be doing uh, a video coming up on that as well. So anyway, I think that's it for me for today. And um, if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Go ahead and subscribe. I'm all of a sudden getting a whole bunch of new subscribers. I'm pushing for 20,000 at this point. So go ahead and subscribe. If you guys haven't uh, considered, go ahead and do it. Subscribe, hit the notification bell. Got a bunch of technical videos coming up that I think you guys will uh, enjoy watching and get a kick out of. So anyway, that's it for me for today. Here's looking toward the uh, 2020 here. I'm, I'm hopefully, uh, we'll see the Roadsters coming out. I'm excited to get mine and uh, a lot of cool stuff going on. So anyway, thanks for tuning in guys. And as always, stay charged. Bye-bye now.
look at that tire. I can actually hear it flapping the sides. Wow. 